Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 609. Uh, my opponent played e4, and I responded with uh, d5, the old center counter or uh, Scandinavian defense. So he took, which is the main move, and uh, no reason not to. And now, uh, queen takes back is the main reply here, but I always like to play this knight of six and round it up with the pawn. Now, one issue you have is that uh, white can try and hold on to the pawn with the move c4. Um, these other moves, d4, knight c3, and knight f3, just give the pawn back, and uh, you get an okay position, although white has an edge, so uh, probably d4 is the main move there. Um, this, this move, bishop b5 check, I hadn't seen that until recently, and someone played it against me, and I didn't know what to do, so I wanted to show this peculiar line. Bishop b5 check, and um, you've got to block with your bishop. Um, I think, uh, yeah, blocking with the pawn gets you into trouble. So you block with the bishop, and then the bishop doesn't stay there and trade itself off, which would be okay. You could take back with the queen or the or the knight, I think. But the bishop goes to uh, c4. And then you've got to find the right move here. And the right move here is, is the very funny move, bishop to g4. And if you find this move, you're okay. But it's kind of strange. It's kind of asking for repetition, right? If he comes back here with check, uh, do you have anything better than bringing the bishop in? Well, maybe you could interpose with the knight. Uh, anyway, it just seemed funny to move the bishop twice like that. But this is the, the move you have to remember. And then after f3, the, the bishop can go back to f5, and you can uh, play this position. Let's see. Let's go on a few more moves. Knight to c3, knight bd7. Yeah, I was just curious to see if this is where the knight goes. It seems pretty logical. Maybe get the knight here, harass the bishop, and try and round up that pawn. Uh, I think you're going to get it back in the long run, but you've got to know how to play that line. Anyway, uh, in the game, my opponent went for um, this line with c4. So just to uh, go back to the beginning, it was e4, d5, pawn takes d5, knight f6, trying to recapture the pawn, and now c4 holding on to it. And this is a, a gambit line. And um, it doesn't have to be a gambit. It's sort of white's choice whether it becomes a gambit or not. C6 is offering the gambit. And um, if he takes, that's what happened in the game. It, it's a gambit. But if he doesn't take, he can play uh, knight c3 or d4. And, and um, in both those cases, black gets the pawn back and you transpose into a different opening. I think the most interesting move here is d4. Because um, after pawn takes and knight to c3, you see the number of games suddenly went up markedly. We've actually transposed into the panov botvinnik attack against the uh, Karo Khan defense. So uh, that's a, it's a peculiar transposition you can get into from the Scandinavian. But if you like the panov botvinnik attack, uh, that can be a way to play it. Just uh, take the pawn, pretend like you're uh, defending with c4 and turning it into a gambit, and then just give the pawn back by playing d4. Anyway, now my, my opponent turns it into a gambit by taking on c6. And this is one of those gambits where uh, black just has more than enough compensation. So he really has an excellent position out of the opening. I'll go on a few moves as long as we're in the book here. These are um, normal moves, knight c3, bishop to f5. Um, I wasn't so sure about bishop c5 here. That's a desirable move to put pressure along the dark squares here. The holes in uh, black's, white's position on the dark squares are one of uh, white's main compensation, main sources of compensation. But um, I went bishop f5 first because I wasn't sure what to do about the knight hopping into um, e4. So I just wanted to stop that. And now he came out with bishop g5. And so we're just uh, out of the opening book here. And uh, black is doing fine. Black is actually uh, equal at, or maybe even better. And um, I play this okay. So h6 kicking the bishop. He drops back. And then I go bishop c5 now, so that uh, if he uh, comes here with the knight, I'm planning to just take it. And uh, that, that should uh, be fine. Um, instead of bishop c5, the chess engine wants me to unpin this knight immediately with the move queen b6. And, you know, I wasn't sure about that because then he can take the bishop and kind of mess up the pawns over here. But it turns out to be okay. So, for example, queen b6, because it's a tempo... I'm hitting this uh, pawn on b2, and if he takes, then uh, I can. I don't have to take the bishop right away. I can take here, and uh, if he tries, his knight is hanging. 
as the problem. And uh, if he defends the knight and tries to trap my queen, I can pile up on the knight with bishop b4. And anyway, it, it just turns out, <laughs> wouldn't be obvious uh, in advance, but uh, or in a blitz game, would be hard to calculate. It just turns out that black is okay here. He has enough pressure. You know, this uh, knight is always going with check. So, um, so the queen doesn't get trapped, and uh, this bishop eventually will have to move away. Um, anyway, <clears throat> interesting. Uh, you would think, yeah, you would think the bishop could also take on uh, on g7 here at some point, but um, it all turns out okay for black. Uh, so anyway, uh, got to have a chess engine to find things like that. I think bishop c5 is an okay move and still keeps an advantage. He plays uh, knight d5 here. Maybe a little bit ambitious here, but piling up on my pawn. Why I say it's a little bit ambitious is that uh, he hasn't developed his king side at all, and he's only got two pieces out, and he's trying to uh, cause trouble. And uh, right here, actually, I have a winning move, although this uh, I'm not doing a tactics quiz here because this one is too obscure to find. I don't think you would find this. So I just left it uh, as uh, an explanation here. Um, you can play the move g5 here and kick the bishop. And the chess engine actually thinks the best move is to uh, leave the bishop there and let me take it and play some other move. So uh, so it just wants to give up a piece at this point. Uh, but if you retreat the bishop, which would be the most natural way to play it, and uh, then trade the knight, the killer move is this one, queen to a5 check. And this idea I did not see at all during the game, but it's because his um, king was never castled, and I really should have been looking for ways to uh, cause trouble. And now if the queen interposes, one point is that the bishop can come to uh, b4 there and win the queen. So he has to move the king. And then uh, this very funny sequence. Bishop check. The king has no squares. <laughs> so he blocks. And then uh, the knight comes in. Knight d4 check. King has to run to f2. Uh, knight takes f3 check. This is a discovered check on the king. Um, the king can't take the knight because it's protected by the bishop. And uh, if the king runs back to e2, this is uh, what I wanted to show you. Knight takes g1 is double check and mate. It's a check from the knight and the bishop. And uh, the king has no squares. He's completely... Uh, so that's just game over. There were other moves there, but... Um, it's all winning for black, and that starts with that g5 move, although the key idea is the check on this uh, diagonal here that I missed during the game. Anyway, um, let's go on with the game. I played queen d6, unpinning this way, and uh, now I am free to... Um, and uh, Now black is, is still better, and, and this knight is free to move. Um, he decides to trade it off, takes with the knight, I take back with the pawn, and he drops his bishop back to g3. And now, uh, here's your first tactics quiz. Why don't you uh, guess what a good move for black is here? Okay, uh, pause the video if you want time to think about it. This isn't um, necessarily an easy one, but I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. The answer is um, bishop to b4 check. And uh, just like in the last line, it's um, taking advantage of the king. Uh, the queen can't interpose. There's no piece that can interpose. The king has to come forward to e2. And then just castling queenside. And, um, uh, you know, I can't give you a specific variation from here, but the, um, the chess engine says there's a mate in eight. So just uh, kicking the king a little bit. And, you know, all my pieces are ready to play, right? They're all ready to hop in. This knight is coming in here with check. And, uh, and what has white got? White has got all those pieces on the back rank. So bishop b4 check, if you thought of that. Uh, hopefully you did because it's very similar to the previous idea. Uh, that's a winning move here. Okay, so uh, he just played bishop g3 and I just passled, castled queenside, which keeps the advantage for me. So I'm not, um, I'm not uh, losing or even worse. I'm actually still better. The queen, his queen came out to h5. Played um, bishop to g6, harassing the queen. Queen went here, check. Got my king a little bit safer over here, but... Uh, there is uh, this diagonal I had to be constantly aware of during the game. Um, rook to d1, holding on to the uh, d-pawn here. So that was his idea. He moved the queen away with tempo and then brought his rook over to defend the pawn. Not a bad idea. I hop my knight into d4. 
He goes bishop to e2, trying to finally uh, develop some pieces over here on the king side. Um, I go in with knight c2 check. Not, not a bad move. Forces him to move his king, and he will never castle, and it just continues to kind of disrupt his development. But um, right here, the way to keep the advantage is to just bring the knight back to d4. It's just a better square for the knight, and just continue to play on with the better development. And uh, there's no specific line here that the chess engine gives, but uh, it still gives an advantage of uh, minus three. So I'm basically a piece up, even though the material is even. So uh, it just means I have uh, an overwhelming position here, and that's the way to do it. I played this rook d to g8, which I thought was good. Uh, and black is still a little bit better here, but not so much. And uh, and it's just that it turns out in, in this uh, position there's some peculiar defenses that... Uh, white has. Well, one thing is it gives them another move of development. And then um, right here, um, I should probably play the move f5. I thought of this idea later, but um, right here would be the best time to play it. f5 kicks the queen, and then when the queen moves away, you can push on to f4, and now the bishop goes to h4. So you're just kind of running the pieces out of squares over here, and then doubling on the uh, g-file. Rook to g2, chasing my knight back to d4. After this exchange, um, bishop to f3, trying to get some counterplay. Um, once again, there's no no specific line here, but I'm really uh, kind of piling up on um, on white. I've got all my pieces out, and his king is still blocking the development of last rook, and his uh, the pawns in front of his king are actually blocking <laughs> blocking his position in as well as pieces are in front of the pawns. So. Uh, just a difficult position for white, and I should be able to uh, win that. Um, let's see. I went with bishop d3, and um, this is not winning anymore after bishop d3. We get into the range where it's about even, although there's some peculiar defenses, like I said, that he had to find. Um, well, maybe it's not that strange. After a bishop takes d3, his, uh, his defense, which I really didn't think of, is uh, rook takes d3, just takes that, now, you know, I was thinking, oh, I've got a tempo on his queen. He has to move the queen. But there's this counterattack on uh, my queen after he, takes, um, after he takes the bishop. So rook takes d3. I take his queen. He takes my queen. Now his uh, rook is hanging, so I can take his rook. Um, so he won a piece but gave up his rook. And, um, but he can get the exchange back with this move knight e1. It's a double attack, hitting my rook and hitting my loose knight over here. So after this trade, and I save the knight, we're in a position which is even. I have a rook and two pieces. He has a rook and two pieces. He actually has, um, oh no, same number of pawns. It's six pawns each. And, uh, um, you know, my pawn structure is a bit disreputable, and he has a bishop pair. But on the other hand, his king is still blocking in his rook, so I probably have enough time to develop enough pressure to have decent uh, compensation here and uh, roughly an equal position. <laughs> Anyway, he played queen h4, and uh, you know I I took the bishop off with check. That was my plan, right? When I played uh, bishop takes d6, I saw that I saw that I was getting this pawn, and that I was attacking his queen. I didn't didn't see these counterattacking ideas, and uh, so this was my plan. He moved the queen, and uh, and then I took here with check. And now he has to take back with the king, so I've dragged his king out in the open. But I have to do something about my queen. I step aside. Let's see. He maneuvers with his queen. He goes to uh, e4. I went to uh, b4. I have to get my knight back, and he's taken away the d4 square. So I probably should have gotten my knight back to d4 while I had the chance. Um, he played the move a3. And so here's your second uh, tactics quiz for this video. There's one uh, nice move for black here. Can you, can you spot the move? Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. This is a completely different idea. Not not this. There's no bishop b4 check in this position anymore. This king has already been been disrupted. Um, but what I can play here is um, the rook up, rook to uh, g4, and it hits the queen. The queen has very few squares. Notice this whole diagonal is covered by my pieces. This diagonal is covered by my pieces. Right and left, up and down. So he has to go back along this diagonal all the way to uh, B1. 
<laughs> and uh, and then I can grab this pawn with check. So this is just a winning position once again for uh, for white. You know, black for black. White's pieces have been chased into awkward spots. Uh, he has trouble blocking. In fact, uh, the engine is giving up material already with rook to d3, suggesting that other lines uh, lead to a mate. But rook d3, of course, is uh, giving up material there. I can at least win the exchange by knight takes. Although, anyway, so that's uh, that's the winning tactic there. Knight rook to uh, Rick to g4, which I really didn't think of once again. <laughs> anyway, my, I mean, my knight was under attack. I wanted to do something about that. It's an example of uh, m when your opponent makes a threat, you should find a bigger threat, and uh, that would really work here. Anyway, so I just retreated my knight. Uh, he played b4, kicking my bishop. I retreat that. Plays knight to d4, getting all fancy here. But knight to d4 is a blunder, and this leads to one more tactic. So I first I trade off the knight. And uh, I can't take back with the pawn because of the pin, but there is a, a very straightforward tactic here. See if you can spot this one. Okay, yeah, I'm going to give the answer away now. You should find this one, so if you haven't got it, definitely pause the video. Uh, it's a classic tactic. It is uh, disrupting the, uh, or removing the uh, defender, removing the piece that pins. Uh, and you can do it with tempo. You just take off that bishop, and now um, now there's no longer a pin, so his uh, rook is hanging. If he takes your rook, you take his rook, and you just stay a piece up. And uh, if the rook retreats, uh, you can retreat your rook. So uh, that just wins a piece. Rook takes g3. So that's the way to play it. Then there's no you know escape move. This, if this rook had a move with tempo, there might be a way to escape. But anywhere it goes, I can just take the rook. And then he can take my rook, but I stay a piece up because I snagged a bishop at the beginning. So that was uh, <laughs> one more winning tactic I missed. And uh, that one I should have gotten. Some of the others are a little hard to find, but the uh, last two, rook g4 and uh, rook takes d3, those are ones I ought to find, really. Okay, so I played rook d8, um, not wanting to allow this rook to stay here. He brings a rook over to support it. And uh, in all of this, we're in the range of about even. So whatever advantage I had out of the opening has uh, dissipated. But um, it's still an interesting game. It's not, uh, it's not a simple kind of even. Uh, let's see. He played king to... Oh, no, it's my turn. I played king c8 here. Ah, yeah, I was playing king c8 to unpin this pawn, so he has to move the rook. He dropped the rook down to d5. Um, and then I play rook d8. I want to just get rid of that rook. It's kind of an annoyance. And he doesn't let me. Brings this rook over here to b5, hitting my pawn. Play rook to d7, defending the pawn. He goes f4 with a counterattack. And uh, I really should answer f4 with f5. Um, I saw after f5 that that would leave this pawn hanging. But, uh, well, I have a nice move there. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't make a tactics quiz out of that one. So after f5... Uh, if he takes the pawn here, which is probably not the best move, I can take here with check. And once again, it's a situation where my pieces are starting to invade. Say so the king moves, I can play a6 here, kicking his rook. And uh, actually, the rook has no squares. If the rook goes here, then um, the move um, b6 traps the rook. And if the rook goes to b6, then now I invade with this rook. This, uh, so I guess this move just disrupted the coordination of his queen and rook, so now the, it's not so easy for him to bring the queen over to oppose my queen and stuff, um, or to bring the rook over. Anyway, uh, and so I'm threatening to come in here and mate. So I, I have a uh, a winning attack here, again. <laughs> so uh, that would have been uh, one chance. Anyway, I took here. He traded queens, and we get into this end game, which is really about even the whole way until he makes the uh, final mistake here. So let's just uh, go forward. Um, it's kind of an interesting ending, but this is getting to be a long video. Um, you know, I, I get a little bit ahead. I, I get some pawns back, and uh, so I have an edge, but it was never really a winning advantage here. It's just kind of a slight edge. I mean, these, these pawns over here are very dangerous, and it's uh, a very short run to where those become uh, uh, winning. Uh, but they never got there. I managed to get my rook over in time, so, I, I, um, so white never had a winning chance here. But um, but he did have drawing chances, and right here was the key moment. Um, I took his bishop, 
and then he just took back and what he needed to do was throw in this check first he checks my king and now my king is too far away to stop him from queening so actually my king runs this way um, he can take the pawn back now um, and then if when I grab this pawn he can do this check trick or he could have pushed the pawn forward and won my rook that way but he's gonna win my rook either way and we can get into this situation where I have a bishop and two pawns against a rook and so from a material point of view um, that's completely even uh, this is still a difficult end game to play I have winning chances I, I could possibly win with these pawns and uh, he has winning chances too <laughs> so uh, uh, it's it's a complicated end game and not not a simple one but uh, even both both sides have chances but uh, with good play uh, neither side should win <laughs> so anyway um, that would have been uh, best play from this point. Instead, uh, he took back immediately after I took his bishop. He took the pawn, and um, that allows me to get one step closer to this pawn. And so now uh, I'm just winning here. He goes for the check and uh, gives another check. But it doesn't matter. I'm rounding up this pawn. He can get a pawn or two. But um, in this position, Let's see. Well, he played on a few moves. Cancel that. Oh, I went to g6. He played f5 check. Then I went to h6. Then he traded. And then uh, marched in with his king. And I just brought my king over. Um, this pawn is defended. The bishop can defend this pawn. I have all the time I need to organize myself to uh, push this pawn through, and he can't prevent it. So he resigned at this point. Anyway, interesting game. Lots of cool tactics. Hope you guys liked this video. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.